In Finnish mythology, Lemminhainen is described as a young and good-looking hero with baby red hair. He is sometimes referred to as a shaman. Lemminhainen plays a significant role in the Kelavela, which is an epic poem based on Finnish oral poetry and mythology. He is often portrayed as an arrogant and short-sighted warrior who is also skilled in rune singing and has a fondness for maidens. He is constantly forced to travel, left without a home and compelled to leave due to various reasons. The exact parentage of Lemminhainen is not known, but he is closely related to his mother who often rescues him from the consequences of his arrogant and reckless behavior. Lemminhainen is considered a shaman due to his ability to travel between different realms. Different stories present variations associated with Lemminhainen, but most of them agree on specific story episodes. For example, Lemminhainen's ability to travel across mythical realms, his personality and reckless behavior, and that he somehow ended up in Tuonela, which is the Finnish underworld, where he is dismembered and thrown into the river of the dead, and so on. The most famous story linked with Lemminhainen is the tale of his death. There are multiple versions of this story, but in the end, Lemminhainen meets his death and his mother manages to bring him back to life. In one version of the story, Lemminhainen sets out to find a bride. He learns about a beautiful maiden named Kiliki who lives on an island. Many call her the flower of the island because of her exceptional beauty. Many men, both mortal and immortal, propose to her, but she rejects them all. On hearing about her, Lemminhainen decides to pursue her to become his wife. Despite his mother's advice and warning that he would face humiliation on the island, Lemminhainen heads to the island where Kirlika lives. As foretold by his mother, he faces humiliation from the islanders. However, he starts working as a herdsman and gradually wins the favor of the maidens on the island except for Kirlika. Despite Lemminhainen's effort over several months, he fails to impress Kiliki, who continuously mocks his advances. One day, all the maidens on the island gathered and began dancing with Kiliki as the lead dancer. Lemminhainen saw an opportunity and kidnapped Kiliki from the stage, taking her away on his sledge. During their escape, he warned the other maidens not to speak of what happened threatening to return and bring destruction to the village if they did. Kiliki continues to express her dissatisfaction with her fate for ending up with a seamlessly insignificant and violent fighter. In response, Lemminhainen makes a promise to her to never go back to war again if Kiliki agrees to not to go back to her village and dance with the village men. Kiliki agreed to it and became his wife and they took vows before the gods and were married. Lemminhainen then took his new bride to his mother, proudly announcing that he got what he wanted. But their marriage didn't last very long. One day, Lemminhainen goes on a fishing trip with a promise to return before nightfall. But he becomes unable to keep his promise and didn't get back for some nights. Kiliki assumed her husband had broken their marriage vows and had gone back to war. So she decides to break her vows too and go back to her home. Lemminhainen's sister follows Kirliki to her village and sees her dancing with the men there. When Lemminhainen returned, she informed him of his wife's actions. Heartbroken, Lemminhainen decided to break their marriage vows and go back to war. His mother tries to stop him, promising to let him spend all day emptying wine barrels, keep all the money from the harvest, and even bring him back his wife. However, Lemminhainen was determined to return to war and turned down all his mother's offers. He also tells her that he has decided to take one of the daughters of Lauhi, who is the mistress of Poyola, as his wife, which makes his mother even more worried. She tries once again to advise him against it, as Lauhi is a powerful witch and death is likely to await him in Poyola, which is the land ruled by Lauhi. Lemminhainen dismisses her warnings and instead hands her his brush, saying that if it starts to bleed, that means he's in trouble. His journey to reach Poyala and see Lauhi's daughters was not an easy task. He had to defeat many monsters already living in Poyala, as well as some sent by Lauhi herself. 
when he finally confronts Lauhi, she challenges him to prove himself worthy of marrying one of her daughters. Her first task is for him to hunt the magical moose of Hisi. Because of the moose's incredible speed, Lemminhainen seeks out Leleki, a renowned ski maker, and has him craft the final ski for the task. He chases the moose with his ski, but the moose leads him onto dangerous parts, breaking his ski and paws. Despite his initial failure, he decides to continue the hunt and seeks the guidance of the gods. With the help of the gods, Lemminhainen successfully captures the moose and presents it to Lauhi, only to receive another mission from the mistress of Boyala. This time, Lemminhainen is tasked with capturing and taming the fiery horse of Hisi. With great effort, he managed to locate the horse but becomes unable to approach it due to its flames. So he prays to the great god Ukko, who sends a thunderstorm that takes out the flames. Lemminhainen then harnesses the horse and presents it to Lauhi. However, Lauhi gives him another challenge to hunt the swan of Tuonela. It's in this task that Lemminhainen meets his death. Lemminhainen somehow reaches the river of Tuonela and encounters the majestic swan guarding the realm of the dead. Stunned by the swan's beauty, Lemminhainen hesitates to harm it. But suddenly a man emerges from the water and throws the water snake at Lemminhainen. The snake dismembers him and throws him into the river of Tuonela. With Lemminhainen's death, the comb he had given to his mother begins to bleed. Realizing her son is dead, Lemminhainen's mother goes to Poyala and demands Lauhi to reveal her son's fate. Lemminhainen's mother manages to get the truth out of Lauhi and learns about Lemminhainen's journey to Tuonela to hunt the swan. On hearing of her son's death, she goes to Ilmarinen and convinces him to craft a giant rake made out of copper and steel. With this rake, she gathers all the dismembered parts of Lemminhainen's body from the river. She puts together the pieces and sends a bee to heaven to fetch honey that can heal her son and bring him back to life. Some claim that Lemminhainen gained his shamanistic powers after his death because there is a belief in Finnish mythology that a person should die and be reborn to become a shaman. In another story, Lemminhainen crashes a wedding in Poyala to which he wasn't invited, despite his mother's warnings not to go, he arrives there only to face humiliation, just as his mother predicted. Now he is not happy to see his uninvited presence due to his violent nature. So Lemminhainen doesn't get served properly, and when he demands service, Lauhi makes her maids bring him a mug of beer mixed with servants. The host of the wedding becomes angry at Lemminhainen's demands and challenges him to a contest. Because of his skills as a shaman and swordsman, Lemminhainen ends up killing the host. Lauhi grows furious on seeing the dead host and summons a thousand soldiers from Poyala to march against Lemminhainen and his people. So Lemminhainen flees Poyala and takes the form of an eagle and rushes back to his mother. On learning her son's foolish actions, she informs him about an island where his father had once hidden after returning from battle. She advises him to hide there for three years. Lemminhainen reaches the island and convinces the women there to allow him to hide. However, when the men return from war, they unite against Lemminhainen, leaving him no choice but to flee the island. He decides to return to his homeland, but upon arriving, he finds that Lauhi's army has destroyed his house and his village. To his relief, he finds his mother hiding in the forest. She explains how Lauhi's forces destroyed the land. In response, Lemminhainen promises to build a new house and wage war against Lauhi. He seeks out his companion Tierra and persuades him to join in their fight against Lauhi. Together, these two warriors get on a journey for revenge. However, on seeing their intentions, Lauhi freezes the water, forcing Lemminhainen and Tierra to turn back to their homeland. Finnish mythology, especially Kelavela, has many other stories on how Lemminhainen's reckless behavior leads him to his doom and humiliation. Almost every time, it's his mother who comes to his rescue, saving him from these disastrous consequences. What do you think of this story? Let me know your thoughts and anything I might have missed. 
If you enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like and sharing it with anyone who might find it interesting. Thank you so much for all your love and support. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I'll see you again with another story to tell.